very good evening morning and afternoon to all of you who have joined us today i am rashika and we are on a 75th workshop uh, and this is a very very important workshop considering all the changes that is happening in the world today uh, we all know the importance of making and taking data informed decisions whether you are a designer a marketer or product manager it doesn't matter but how do we start with it right that's the most difficult question should we start with learning the tool should we start understanding how does analytics actually work to help you understand and solve that problem we have prasanta today prasanta is an information experience designer working at the intersection of design coding and journalism at rutus graphics with a background in engineering from nit one of the most famous engineering colleges in india and design from nid bangalore he crafts data pieces to help narrate important stories visually several of his work has been recognized with numerous awards including webby awards oh my god prasanta i was not aware of it he also teaches and talks about data visualization narrative cartography and design at eminent in institutes nationwide so prasanta a very warm welcome and stay is all yours hello uh, first of all thank you for that uh, warm introduction uh, yeah i'm glad to be here to be talking to you all today and uh, well today's discussion is mostly about how do you approach uh, when you have to design something uh, that is uh, some kind of a representation of data and uh, sometimes as uh, we just heard that you know you get stuck between whether what tools to use or like what do i even do so today hopefully by the end of the session you'll be able to have some idea of how to approach that problem with uh, design thinking and the kind of you know uh, the design background that you have and then come up with uh, something that serves the purpose of uh, visual communication right in the meanwhile we'll also uh, look at how uh, given a simple data set how to make a chart out of it you know because at the end of the day you have to make something uh, with uh, with the data so uh, and and most important of all we'll also learn uh, some of the common pitfalls and mistakes that uh, we see because you know to be able to make good visualization we should also know what bad visualizations are or like what makes a visualization bad or uh, misinformation as such right so all of that uh, in the next hour and uh, a, a lot of this is going to be interactive uh, so i'll be asking questions and uh, you know just feel free to unmute yourself and respond you know just just like a conversation and let's see uh, how it goes right i'm going to share my screen in the meanwhile you can uh, tell me you know some instances when you have had to deal with i think no me had to build a crypto dashboard with data okay <laughs> uh, so was the data given to you it's a game designing dashboard uh, like it's the common thing in the chat dashboard design Okay, okay, and who were you designing it for? Mm. Like, like, like for internal communication for business purposes, or like you know just to uh, see what's interesting. Do you want me to take them live to answer this question? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, or yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, it have around KPIs. Okay. just okay e-commerce b2b site that's what they respond okay yeah that's a very common use case um anybody work with internal reports and business communication marketing reports uh is uh google analytics Stuff like that. I think I do the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so the point is, there's no escaping numbers, right? And and at times numbers can be hard to process, and 
when you have to make decisions based on data, uh, misunderstanding can be disastrous. So, the, so for example, you can have uh, dashboards that are for you know medical purposes where you have to make decisions in a split second, right? And uh, maybe you know you just need to put numbers out there, or maybe you need to visualize it in some form that is easy to consume, right? This 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 is a lot of opportunity and necessity in 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 a lot of cases, right? When numbers have to be uh, dealt with. And at this point, I also wanted to talk a little bit about like what we mean when we say data and numbers. So at the end of the day, all of this is information, right? However, when it comes to dealing with numbers, we tend to relate that with data. So in the rest of the presentation, whenever we talk about data, understanding would be it has some kind of you know numbers or uh like quantitative or qualitative measures that can be you know something that can be measured of sorts right we'll also talk about data or information that is like um you know intangible or abstract and then how do you represent things like that uh but yeah moving on uh also since most of us are designers here uh studying design or practicing design just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the different names we hear in the industry, right? So let's start with design. So today, when we talk about design, everybody kind of talks about it as a problem solving tool, right? So you can be digital product designers, UI, UX designers, or any any other form of designers. But at the end of the day, you are trying to, you know, trying to solve kind of a problem, right, uh, through your design. Then comes communication design. It's it's a vast field, and at the end of the day, it has you know a graphic design, uh, information design, interaction design, UI UX design. All of it is some form of communication design, right? Graphic design, we all know what it is. Uh, so I'll come to what information design is. So for those of you who may not be aware, it exists as a field of its own, which deals with how do you represent uh, information, both simple and complex. So on one hand, information design can be as simple as, uh, you know, uh, designing icons for uh, for your app right like basically icons are representation of some concept or you know nouns or verbs right and that you have to represent through a pictogram if you may call so on one hand there's that and on the other hand you have uh, dealing with hard numbers data complex information processes so uh, the the metro map we have seen the subway map you know how all the metro stations are shown so that's a schematic diagram or uh, an abstract map right so that is also something that information designers would make and then there's also you know information designers designing uh, the information that goes in our traditional UI UX designs right and then so today we are going to talk about the other end of information design which is how do you visualize information or uh, data right so uh let's before we uh proceed let's take a look at uh two examples from history uh on the left is one of the first line charts ever made uh by william playfair it shows uh balance of trade right so of course it is a line chart because today we know this is called a line chart, but you see how visually through uh, the means of colors and labeling, it shows two different metrics very, very visually uh, in, in, a, in a way, right? You know, balance in favor, favor of England and balance again. So even if you don't know how to read a chart, you can still take away something from this, right? So it solves the purpose of communicating something that's complex. And then if you want, you can read what's uh, the numbers that are written out there. You can take a, a measuring tape and actually measure things and all sorts of stuff. But at the very least, you get to get an idea of what 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 is being told here, right? Uh, so there's hard numbers. The one on the right is interesting uh, because it is a diagram of a slave ship by Thomas Clarkson. Now, I call it a diagram because 
it's not a chart, right? But at the same time, it's not a, a artistic representation, right? The the drawing has uh, very much uh, the numbers and information at, uh, that it wants to portray. So on one hand, you could have like, you know, hard numbers in the chart showing, okay, how many slaves would uh, put in a ship and how, uh, how, how they would be arranged, right? But at the end of the day, you have to understand that the topic being talked about needs much more than just an abstract representation, right? Now, so what this kind of a diagram does is actually makes you see like how uh, those little diagrams of people in the chip, it also, it does a very good job of showing actually the, the gravity of the concept that's being talked about, right? So sometimes even though you have numbers, you may choose to represent it not in a traditional format, but using your design thinking in the best way to because uh depending on what you need to communicate right so uh that brings to the gist of the conversation the goal is to transform information to knowledge and that's how you create impactful visualizations so in his book uh information is beautiful david mccandles uh he talks about uh, a venn diagram where a successful successful visualization comprises uh, of four things one information the data the numbers and then when you took take all of that it should be able to tell a story a message right and that message should serve a purpose and all of that should be represented as a visual form, uh, as, a, as a visual, right? It should not be, so if you have like information, story and goal, but you don't have a visual form, then what you end up with is a schematic or like a wireframe, right? So it doesn't have a visual form, it's just, tell, has, you just put the information and you know, trying to solve a, a, a purpose of just representing uh, on a low, a low fidelity, uh concept right uh i'll be sharing this presentation later so i I'd, I'd ask you to go through this uh it's very interesting there's also uh, things like boring so basically uh if you have information uh, a goal and a visual form but there's no story you know no takeaway it's not interesting so that's that's what he categorizes as boring right and if you have an information uh, story and visual form, you know, you make something with information and it's good looking, but it doesn't serve any purpose, then it's useless, right? Uh, we'll see at some point where uh, uh, the goal is a bit abstract, uh, where uh, the representation of data uh, is supposed to be more artistic, you know, data art, uh, as, as we call it. Uh, but then again, you have to understand for uh, data art, its purpose is to, uh, you know, enchant and mesmerize and uh, do what art is supposed to do. So it, so it would be inappropriate to think of data art as something that doesn't have a goal, but uh, just to lay it out there that you can make something that's artistic and uh, think that it's not a successful visualization, but that may not be the case. So this is like a good framework to evaluate what you make uh, in terms of a visualization, right? Uh, also, it's sort of a spectrum. So you have the art of journalism where you deal with hard information. So there's this branch of journalism called data journalism, right? So you report, uh, you find facts, find information, uh, what whatever the information is trying to tell and tell a story with that. So that's the art of dealing with information. And then the art of design where uh, you, you bring it out in a visual form instead of a text form, right? Oh, a little about me. Uh, I'm an information designer, a web developer, and a data journalist. So uh, we can talk about my work process later on, but in general, it involves with uh, starting with an idea of finding data or you have data and then coming up with what can the data tell me, right? So you following the journalistic process of, you know, talking to the data, finding what 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 story it can tell, and then figure out like, what is it? or how is it that I'm, am I gonna tell it to my audience, right? Uh, 
Uh, and then, of course, like given that uh, most of the medium is web based, you have to represent things digitally. So there's the uh, there's uh, like the hard skills that you have to uh, make make the visualizations, to make a website, and put it all there. So so it's a broad spectrum of things that you need to do to make a visualization. And I, can, I have been doing that for the last almost five years now. Uh, and yeah, so. That's about me. Uh, here are two visualizations on two stories that I have worked over the years. Uh, can someone uh, tell me what the chart say? Like roughly it's out of context, but still uh, if you could see, say if uh, what you read. So just a, a brief introduction. Uh, the one on the left is on a story about uh, India's vaccination during the COVID. The one on the right is about a story uh, about how uh, about Delhi pollution in winters. Uh, oh, people are people can yeah they can let me know here and I'll unmute them. Uh, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Do you have any responses? So... Not, not yet. I think they're putting their veins to decode it. All right. So, so the chart on the left is um talks about uh how many vaccines uh, different countries had purchased so it's kind of uh you know you have to order vaccines beforehand and then uh they'll be delivered and then you can vaccinate people so uh this data was available at that point and it was an interesting metric to see like how uh countries were uh you know uh placing orders for vaccines uh now the reason i showed this chart is because uh of course, the num actual number of vaccines uh, are in in millions, right? So if imagine I put those numbers on the chart, you wouldn't be able to, you know, make sense of, okay, like how big is, you know, 1 million vaccines or how big is 2 million vaccines? Yeah, I know it's big, but in, in, a, in, a, in a context, right? So, uh, so sometimes you have to... Uh, actually not sometimes but always you have to uh, think about like what is it that you're trying to communicate right so in this case and how might people read it so i know that people know that everybody would need like two doses of vaccine so a simple act of transforming that number into okay so if i have 1 million vaccines uh that means that i can uh vaccinate like half the people with those number of vaccines right so using that i can transform it to like okay how many doses per person i can get right and then this chart becomes interesting because then you see that uh you know some countries have placed or enough orders to be able to vaccinate like up to eight doses so there's you know that could have a message of you know some countries holding vaccines and then you also have you know uh india which was hadn't placed enough orders by that time right so that's about how to think about like data, like just because you have the data in one format doesn't mean that you directly, you know, put it on a chart and, you know, do uh, something. So it's always about what message you're trying to communicate, right? The second thing is about, you know, visual design, right? So what uh, we wanted to talk about India. So, you know, you, there's hierarchy of the colors, the hierarchy using uh, using of the labels, uh, then also important milestones, like how to put uh, in context of uh, like, okay, whenever India placed orders, like what does that mean? Like, you know, so hence you have those annotations showing like, okay, uh, January 16 doesn't mean a lot to me, but when I say that, okay, vaccination began on that day, okay, don't quote me on that. I may have, I don't exactly remember if it was January 16, but, but let's say, uh, so instead of the actual date, when I say, uh, the same thing, but in a, in a way that would make sense to you that, okay, vaccination began, phase one began, phase two began, phase three began. So then you see the chart becomes interesting. You can, even if you have no prior knowledge of, 
you know what's happening or you know you don't remember calendar nobody remembers the calendar but you can put things in context right so that's one example uh the one on the right it's about delhi pollution so this was uh about finding uh the story of uh, so we all know right uh, the pollution in delhi uh, for for a lot of us who don't know so delhi uh, is a, is a, is the capital of india it's a small uh, place which is landlocked and has a severe uh, air pollution problem especially in the winters because of a lot of reasons uh, uh, most prominent amongst which is uh, burning of crop stubble in the nearby states and also you know burning of firecrackers during uh, the festival of diwali which also happens uh, you know uh, at the onset of the winter and and other stuff so no now this is a known fact right but how do we investigate it with numbers like do numbers say what people are saying so that was that's what this chart shows so if you take the air quality level the gray chart that you see on top and then the at the bottom if you take the number of you know stubble burning fires that that data you get from nasa satellite imagery uh if you put them together you see the spikes that you see in air quality uh so drop so, or, or like the particulate matter in here uh, coincides with those uh, whenever there's a fire, right? And then if you also add the uh, dates of when, you know, the firecracker burning happens, you see there's definitely a peak on or near that date. So you can say with some certainty that, okay, these may not be the only reasons, but these definitely contribute to the, the uh, pollutants in the air in that period, right? So this is more of an investigative uh, method right like you know something you have a hypothesis but then you need to uh, find the data and treat the data to, uh, and see how you can uh, come up with an insight right uh, so that brings us to this so why visualize data right so uh, we have seen two examples uh, to reveal integrate structure and patterns in the data that that was the case of the uh, air pollution example uh, to tell a complex story through engaging infographics yes uh, so that is uh, so any of these stories if you'd see there's a lot of visuals which are just charts or illustrations or a mix of both so one one uh, example would be the uh, uh, the slave ship example, you know, it's it's an infographic as such, but it's also driven by data. It's not a piece of art. And at the end of the day, to educate and inform, whether you are uh, informing the audience, whether you're informing yourself, whether you're informing your uh, business people. Uh, yeah, it's always has to serve that purpose of uh, bridging the gap between information and knowledge. Uh, the... Uh, the picture on the right is an interesting thing. Um, it's called the Datasaurus dozen. Um, so over here you see there are 13 sim small charts, right? And then on the top right, you have some statistics uh, that reads uh, mean, uh, mean of X, mean of Y, uh, standard deviation, correlation, right? So... Uh, before, uh, what's interesting about this is all of these are different data sets. However, they all have the same statistics of mean, standard deviation, and correlation. So imagine, like, you know, a data analyst or whoever, you, you have those data sets, you calculate those, and then based on that, you would infer that uh, oh, the data is all the same, right? But the moment you visualize it, you see that one looks like a dinosaur, one looks like a star, one looks like a cross, you know, all these are very, very varied data sets, right? They look completely different from one another, right? But statistically, they are all similar, right? So that's why visualization is important. Sometimes the only way you can make sense of the data is through a, a, a visualization, right? Uh, this is uh, pretty new uh, in the sense uh, there was an original uh, same concept called ANSCOM's Quartet, which was also uh, 
uh, like four data sets that look similar, uh, that look different, but uh, are actually different, but have uh, similar statistical measures, just, you know, a piece of history. Uh, so yeah, that's why we should visualize data. So, uh, so now, so far we have seen that um, visualizations can help us investigate, visualizations can help us uh, declare something, you know, or communicate an insight, right, that we have found from our data. Uh, so uh, Scott Berinato, he puts together this nice uh, chart about uh, how to make visualizations that really work, right? So even before you set on to make a visualization, uh, you should ask yourself two questions, right? Is the information conceptual or data-driven, right? So data-driven, pure numbers, or conceptual, maybe something like the slave ship, you know, you need to show uh, something that's not exactly the numbers. And then are you declaring something or exploring something, right? Uh, on, a, on a broad level, uh, exploring something would lead to uh, dashboards where, uh, you know, you can play around and uh, look at data in different forms, look at different visualizations, and the onus is on the viewer partially to explore whatever the insights are, right? And declaring is when you have an insight and you would just want to to communicate to your audience right so that's where a lot of the the charts that you see in journalism right so they are they have annotations they they have like one message uh of sorts uh so that there's no ambiguity right like you have an insight and we we, we communicate it directly to you so so on a on a broad scale all your data visualizations can be either declarative or explorative uh, so you see, uh, let's take a look at the quadrants. Uh, let's start with the top left, right? So something you have conceptual, which is not data, and then you are declaring something. So that is an illustration. So that could be something as simple as, you know, making a wireframe or making a sketch to show a concept and declaring it to, you know, your people, right? So it can not, it may, uh, it's not a database, right? Like it's, it's, you know, just a sketch. If it's conceptual and exploratory, then you it's the purpose is for idea generation, right? You would draw a lot of stuff, explore uh, different ways of uh, representing that concept, and then that's the process of idea generation. And then you have something that's data-driven, hard numbers, and you're declaring something. Simple, simple chart, the everyday data is. And then you have visual discovery where it is data driven but there's a scope of exploration so like dashboards of sorts uh where you know there's layers of information that you can uh, explore and uh, discover right uh not to say that your visualization has to fall in one category because it's always a journey. So chances are you would start with an idea generation, an idea illustration, maybe that's the end, or maybe from there you also find some data and then you have an idea illustration and a data viz, or maybe in your dashboard, you have an idea illustration, which shows some kind of a concept, you know, a schematic diagram of, uh, you know, how your keywords uh, are structured, right? Or And then there may be data of how uh, a, a chart of how each of those uh, keywords are performing in, a SEO, SEO, in terms of SEO, right? Like, this is an example from uh, analytics. Um, so yeah, that's like the gist of uh, some question that you should definitely ask before you start making a visualization. Uh, so moving on from that, data visualizations can range from simple charts to dashboards to even art, something that we spoke earlier, data art, right? Let's look, uh, take a look at some examples. So on the left, you have scientific data, hardcore charts uh, from the um, IPCC uh, COP26 report from uh, last, last to last year from 2021, yeah. Uh, what well, time flies. Uh, yeah. So uh, these are scientific charts, you know, the scientists found something and they want to show it and they have done a pretty good job of uh, showing uh, the data. But one of the good things about these charts is how well it shows uncertainty, right? So you see the 
hashed out part. So the line is the actual data, uh, the observed data, but a lot of the hashes, the shading that you see, that's like the error, the uncertainty of sorts. So these charts, uh, the link is here. I would say go through some of these charts and see how well it does uh, when your data is not definitive, right? And how well you can uh, communicate uncertainty through some of the charts. On the right is uh, Reuters uh, COVID vaccinations tracker. It's a dashboard where you get to explore uh, the stats from different countries. And then you have some charts about uh, countries, how countries are performing in terms of their vaccinations and their uh, COVID infections and deaths and so on. So it's, it's a mix of exploratory and declarative of sorts. Uh, the one on the left, it's data-driven but conceptual illustration. So this shows uh, how many, uh, so this story is mainly about plastic bottles and how many plastic bottles we generate uh, over time, you know, in a day, in a month, a year. And uh, of course it could have been a bar chart or a line chart, right? But the idea is not to just tell you the numbers and you know be done with it. The idea is to show that how big of a number something is, right? So in 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 uh, in data viz lingo, these are called scale graphics, like to show how big uh, something is, right? The scale of something. So if I tell you one million. Ah, it's a number, you know, it has these many zeros. But if I tell you how big, you know, 1 million plastic bottles are, well, how big? So why don't we take those bottles and make a pile, you know, and in your city and see how big, right? So that's that's the the visualization concept for, for this piece. And it, you see, it's impactful, right? Like, uh, I think this is a year worth of plastic bottles again. Uh, and you know it becomes the tallest thing in the in the city, right? Uh, the one on the right is uh, from a project called Dear Data by Georgia Lupi and Stephanie Posovic. Uh, this is an example of data art, but also about uh, visualizing personal data or data uh, as a means of representing abstract things like you know things you have seen in the day or things you feel during the course of the day. This is a very beautiful project which also exists as a book and uh, you can check it out on the website. So basically what they did was for uh, every week they would uh, take a topic and then hand draw things you know uh, representing uh, an aspect of their life and then they would send postcards they did this for a year and the outcome is very beautiful so uh, as they say like you know the best way to represent something the idea is sometimes you need to take a step back and draw with your hand and see how you can uh, you know be one with the data so this is an example uh, where uh, it's artistic, but also if you look closely, it has you know complex encoding and some underlying data beneath it. Uh, all right. Uh, should we pause or uh, should we take some questions now? There's one question. Uh, like it's around. Yeah, we have two questions. How can we identify a particular kind of data work? And with which kind of chart? Right. How can we? Oh, okay. The same question. Yeah. Right. Uh, so this is actually something we'll come to in a bit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, other second, that, yeah sorry. second question is also related. Yeah, it's the same question, right? How can we right. make a specific kind of data chart will work with specific coding language? Okay. Yeah. So uh we'll we'll talk about charts in a bit. Uh but uh, but any questions so far? Other than charts. No? Okay, moving on. So At this point, we're uh, if you have not uh, already realized, we have seen that there's some information or data that we have to represent, and then we 
have visual elements, right? It can be an illustration, it can be a line, it can be a rectangle, you know, bar chart, right? Uh, and then somehow they we marry them together and then they make sense, right? So the process that happens over here, that is called uh, visual encoding. <clears throat> so there's also non-visual encoding, like you can uh, make uh, data uh, encoded into uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a sound, uh, you know, you hear it and it makes you feel some things, right? Um, there's also, you know, so uh, I'll give you one interesting example of, encoding which you might have come across in your lives uh, uh do you know uh, cooking gas lpg right cooking gas lpg uh, it has a distinct smell right uh well the interesting thing about that is that's not the smell of lpg that's a smell that's put in the uh, in mixed with the gas before uh, and put in the cylinder right and it's very pungent, it's very distinct. <clears throat> and the idea behind that is that to convey the information that, okay, you know, anytime you get that smell, you know it's that cooking gas smell. So if there's a leakage, even the slightest form, you know, you can identify. So that's like encoding of information in a media, right? So there it's a gaseous medium, right? So it's not a chart. Right? It's still conveying information. So I don't know if that makes you uh, understand the concept of encoding better, but that's what encoding is. So in our case, we'll use visual elements, right? So uh, what kind of visual elements do we have? Uh, questions? Uh, so, uh, nothing you can... Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's take a look at this. Okay, for this, I want you all to unmute yourself and uh, or or just type it out in the chat. Two images, right? Uh, describe what you see, the left one and the right one. Like, you know, a sentence. How would you say what you're looking at? The first thing that comes to your mind, it's not a trick question. You shouldn't be looking at it for more than five seconds. We okay. have an answer to shapes, two colors. Shapes, two colors, yes. Uh, first image, two colors, yes. Right. Organized and unorganized. Interesting. Uh, so, okay. Second image, a pattern or shape. Shapes, two colors. Ah, then it's, yes, that's the... Uh, kind of, you know, summarizes all. On right, everything is organized. On the left, everything is unorganized. That's interesting. Uh, okay, design and art. Okay, we're going abstract. Um, so building on top of what Dennis said, Actually, both of them are organized. So one on the left is, yes. Uh, well, Banki, yes, that's color and shape organization. Yes, finally we're getting there, right? Okay. Okay, poll is closed. Yes, we have spent too much time looking at it. Now we are all get correct answers. Uh, so the thing is, Despite of who we are, we notice the colors first, right? Like the one on the left, it's visible. You have some blocks of blue and blocks of red, right? On the right, the first impression is it, uh, it's unorganized, right? But then you'd have to take a deeper look, you know, spend some time. And then you realize, oh, okay. Uh, on the right, also it's organized, but it doesn't feel that way, uh, you know, circles and squares, right? Correct? Everybody agree? Anybody disagree? So, so what, what do we take away from here? So we have, what visual elements do we have here, right? We have color. It's an element we use in design and shapes, two, two geometrical shapes, simple shapes, uh, squares and circles, right? 
So we have to understand uh, the way we see things impact how we process and understand things, right? Uh, and that is going to impact uh, how you uh, represent data. So, uh, and then you are going to be able to answer the question of what kind of data works for what kind of charts. Because my friend, you can take one data set and represent it in hundred ways and every chart will have a very different uh, takeaway uh, or message from it, right? So it's, uh, of course there are, you know, boilerplates that right? yeah, this should be a bar chart, this should be a line chart, but the goal of this is to take a step back and think using the fundamentals. We are designers, right? Like we, we are not data analysts. We don't have to bother about like what chart, uh, charting tool we are using, what, uh, you know, coding language, you know, right? I am a designer. I know these are the visual elements I have, right? Shapes, colors, hierarchy, you know, text, uh, you know, other, other visual elements, uh, space, right? Positive and negative space. All of these as designers, we have them. And then how do we make them tell you something, right? And that's the game. So, uh, so yeah, taking the step ba back about vision and perception. So invariably we see some things before others, right? So in this case, we saw color before shape, right? So, so what does that tell us? If you use color to show some kind of information, chances are people will see that first, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to be conscious about, uh, you know, accessibility, color blindness, you know, things that you deal with in, in your graphic design. All of those design principles also apply to this. Mm -hmm. So information design, data visualization is very much a part of it. Just because there's data, uh, nothing to be scared about, you know, or not, it's not something completely different. Uh, yeah, so the next is shape, right? Uh, so similarly, uh, we call these pre-attentive variables, right? So even before you pay attention, you can process it. Oh, okay, there's co red color and blue color, right? Like it took you what, like a split second to see that. So uh, using these, uh, we will be, uh, encode uh, different pieces of information and represent them. So sometimes you can, uh, so now the question is, uh, do we need to make a chart for everything? No, right? Like you have smartwatches where they encode a uh, heartbeat to that animation, right? Like how big that thing uh, gets, like it, it's an abstract shape. It doesn't even need to be a heart. It's a simple circle, right? But you read it as a heartbeat. So it's encoded to animation, you know, the uh, thing about rhythm, right? Those anime meditation apps that come with breathe, right? Like it shows, it gives, you a visual metaphor of your lung expanding and contracting and you have no trouble reading it right like so that's encoding some information and showing you using you know uh graphic elements right so based on those uh geometric uh, uh and non-geometric shapes we have all these charts and the thing is those principles of visual encoding drive uh, what chart uh, you make, right? So uh, sometimes you'll be dealing with uh, a chart that doesn't exist. Like it's a, you just, you know, you have to, you can put dots and uh, it's a, a very different form of a chart that makes sense, right? Uh, but to answer your question, but to make our lives easier, we already have a lot of these charts that exist and work for different kinds of data. Um, before that, let's talk about the types of data in general. So data can either be, uh, uh, quantitative where, you know, there are numbers or it can be qualitative or categorical, like, uh, you know, uh, the colors of shirts, uh, you all are wearing today. Right. So that would be categorical data. Right. And, uh, quantitative data would be, okay. Uh, you know the ages of the people or, you know, the heights of the people, right? So that could be quantitative data. Uh, within quantitative data, there's all, uh, it can have two trends, uh, rather three trends, you know, 
when you order numbers, what are the possible ways, right? It can be increasing or decreasing, right? Uh, or or not just for numbers, like even for, uh, uh, you know, uh, one qualitative data, there, there is a possibility that the uh, it's increasing or decreasing in some way, right? And uh, then there's divergent data, right? You feel uh, so that applies to both qualitative and quantitative. So you can feel hot, you can feel cold, or you can feel, you know, neither like a neutral. So that's diverging. Same thing with uh, with temperature scales, right? You 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 must have seen those charts where, you know, hot is shown as red and cold as blue and white represents, you know, somewhere in the middle, right? So, so that's another kind of uh, trend in the data diverging so depending on that we'll have to choose like how we represent it uh this uh visual guide is by the financial times by the way and it kind of shows like different uh statistical things how to show so if you want to show magnitude you know how big or small something is you know the best way is to uh length because they are easy to process right so i can draw a rectangle and then make the sizes of size uh, length of the rectangles different and there you have a bar a column chart a bar chart or you know whatever you want to call it uh you can stack those bars and all of that but it still shows magnitude in the best possible way you can have pictograms like you must have seen those charts where uh one person represents like you know a uh, hundred people and then you just stack those people that shows you know some kind of population related stuff uh also uh please do not do that where you cut a person in half to show a fraction yeah let's not do that so if you have need to do that then probably you need to go back and change your uh the way you are calculating the thing um yeah then you have uh size of a circle right uh you may have seen uh maps or bubble charts as as you call it so the area of the circle represents how big uh, a small something is, right? So that's magnitude. We have all seen pie charts, right? Uh, but can you tell me like, what's the purpose of pie charts? Like what, what does it show? Like in what situations have you seen pie charts? I know it's a favorite because it's circular <laughs> and looks good. Anything in the chat? Questions? Percentage of distribution, like the contribution that's yeah. in the chat. Yeah, yeah. So a part to whole relationship. So if you want to show that, okay, uh, you know, 50%, yeah, as you said, percentage, yeah. So you can also do that with a bar chart, right? So you can have a rectangle and you take a part of it and show okay you know those uh bars now that's like a debate of <coughs> whether you should make a bar chart uh sorry uh like a uh a percentage bar a rectangle or let's not call it bar right let's call it a rectangle should you show part to whole relationship using a filled versus uh non-filled rectangle or a circle and uh, coloring parts of it in diff with different metrics, right? So uh, both of them have the same data. It's just, uh, well, Sarath, you are in for a surprise uh, in a bit uh, or not, but we'll take a look at that. So these are questions that you'll come across, right? So whether uh, you should make a bar, uh, use a circle or rectangle to show the same data, right? We'll see why one works better than the other, or maybe not. Uh, then there's different uh, other charts for distribution. So you want to show how trends in the data light. So for example, if we had to make a, a chart about the heights of the people, uh, I wouldn't want to make a chart of you know everybody's height right with the names because that's not what matters to me like if that's the case i'll probably just make a table with your names and your height that's much easier to read and you know do whatever i want to do with it rather than putting in a chart but if i make a chart the what would be the purpose i want to see like okay what is what how tall most people are in this call really right 
So that's what like how is the data distributed? So that's where you have distribution. You can show distributions using histograms, you know, rug plots, density plots, uh, so on and so forth, right? Um, yeah, I would suggest take a uh, look through this, uh, just read up on that. So you get a basic idea about which, what charts work for what kind of, you know, statistical measure, uh, uh, let's say. Uh, there's also this website called data to .com, which has like a very flowcharty experience where you can choose like, what is your data? Like it's, is it numeric? Is it like, you know, uh, categorical? Is it like geographic data? And then it will walk you through like what kind of chart you should use. So, uh, you know, all the stuff to help you out there. Okay. Any questions so far? Let's see. The next section is we'll actually play with some data and make a chart just to see how to do. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that link in the chat. All right, so let's draw with some data. Uh, I'm gonna try and copy this. I cannot, I'll share it with you later on. But uh, this data set, uh, I got, I just found it from Kegel. It has about 300 songs of Kishore Kumar. Uh, from Hindi movies. So let's take a look at this data. Oh, how do I hide this? Okay. Yeah. Can everybody see this char, uh, this Excel sheet? Okay. Uh, now we are sort of moving into the domain of tools because you know at the end of the day you have to you know work with get your hands dirty and uh, de draw some charts. So the most basic tool I would say is Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, still, Microsoft Excel has its pros um, and cons. Uh, one of the cons is it tries to read everything as a date. Uh, so at times, your data might get messed up. Uh, also, it doesn't work with really huge data sets, but I don't think that's going to be a problem a lot of the times. Uh, in my day-to-day -day work, I still prefer you know, uh, using Excel or Google Sheets to you know just take a look at what the data looks like and get some basic analysis done to to understand the data you know just like first date with the data of sorts uh so yeah the anybody who has never heard or used microsoft excel if not you can download it uh i'll be sharing the data set link as well later on uh i haven't actually i've used this uh you know sheet excel and zoho sheets okay Uh, I'm just gonna oh what happened mm. nope didn't work sorry uh that's okay no worries I think I'll uh, do you want to like make it as an activity or we can share it after the presentation also yeah I guess um let's just walk you through and then you can try it out uh in your own sweet time. So uh, this is what, you know, Excel looks like or any data, you know, will look like in your life that uh, is data. It will be a table. It will have, you know, what we call rows and columns, right? Uh, 
So here we have columns, which are like the different proper properties of the data. So we have a uh, song title, name of the song, the movie, the year of release, the music director, the song type, whether it was duet or solo, singer type, male and female, who the singers were, uh, YouTube link to the song and audio link to the song, right? So any data that you ever have in your life would be, uh, should be able to be represented in a tabular format in this, like the most basic, right? So now what we're trying to do is, um, we're trying to find out uh, every year, how uh, many songs uh, Kishore Kumar sang and whether it was a duet or solo. Right. So that's our task. So we have a question in our mind and we have a data set. So I'm going to go to this data and ask this question. Right. So is, 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 is that clear? We understand what the task is. Right. So first and foremost, when you have data, uh, when you download it, it would appear as a CSV. Uh, it won't be formatted in this way. So what you can do is uh, you can, uh, in the formatting, you can uh, format the whole thing as a table and then you can, you know, easily sort uh, stuff. So we understand sorting. Sorting is basically uh, ordering by in some order. So let me try doing sort smallest to largest or the other way around. So yeah, the latest is 1989 in this data. And the earliest is 1951, right? Uh, so if we look at the data, you see like we have multiple entries for one year, which is, you know, something that you would expect multiple songs in a year. So uh, in order to uh, get that information from our data, like I have to count, like for every year, I have to go and count like how many entries are there and then find out like whether it was a duet or solo, right? Like. In a, in a different alternate universe, you would go and manually count, but Excel or any data analysis tool we use to make our lives easier. Uh, this process here is called pivoting the data, you know, or uh, we'll make something called a pivot table. So what you can do is select all the data, go to insert and uh, do a pivot table, right? It'll ask source and all of that. I'm gonna create my own pivot table. Okay. Oops. Uh, so in this, I'm gonna select what uh, data I want. Okay. So for a pivot table, I can select what rows I want, what columns I want and what values I want, right? So rows, I want to do something by year, right? So let's go ahead and select year of release in the rows, right? So now I have a list of all the years, right? Now I want to count like how many entries there are for every year. So for that, I can, you know, do the song title. So I can do, put it in the columns, uh, sorry, not in the columns, in the values. So it says count of song title. So what I have is, for every year, how many songs are there, right? And it also gives me a grand total, total 300 songs, right? But we also wanted uh, to divide this count by whether it's uh, a solo or duet. And that is basically song type. So I'm going to put that in columns, right? So now that same data is divided into how many duets, how many solo, and then you have total, right? So this grand total thing, Excel automatically calculates for you. I can uh, select to remove this as well if I don't want it to be shown. Oh, sorry. Yeah, remove grand total. So yeah, now I have a calculation that I created from my original data set. And this I can use to do something, right? So you can use it to make a chart directly here. Uh, so let's see how you might do it. Let's select all the data. And in the insert, 
you know, it's already recommending some charts for me. So I can select a bar chart. And here, here you go. You have a bar chart. Uh, it's two bars together for every year. It can, I can change the type of chart actually. I want a stack bar chart. So here you go. You have a one rectangle for every year and the rectangle is divided by the, between duet and solo by the number of years, right? Simple. Here's your first chart. Now, the same thing, uh, there are lots of online tools that are available to make uh, charts that look good and you can you know, uh, directly use them. So one such tool is called Data Wrapper. Uh, you can just Google for Data Wrapper, you can find it. So in that you can, I'm just gonna walk you through the process of making a chart in this. One reason is because it's very hard to make bad charts using this tool. So I would totally recommend like if you are very new to making charts, uh, take your data, go to this and see uh, what visualizations are available uh, as long as you are sticking to the, you know, the basic representation of data. So I'm gonna click on new, I'm gonna select a chart. Uh, let's give it a moment. So making a chart over here is you can upload data and all of that stuff, but at the very least you can directly copy paste your data. So I'm just gonna select my data from here. Copy, go here and do a paste, right? All my data, hit proceed. So you get a preview of what your data looks like. So if you read over here, it would say, uh, dates are automatically colored green numbers are colored blue and red cell indicates there's a problem so you see data wrapper is smart enough to realize that these are dates right and then these are numbers that has to be shown in some way so let's proceed so by default it tries to make a line chart for you these are the available chart types that are there let's give it a moment so it has made a line chart, but you see the data is not continuous and also not the best way to show this. I just want to show quantity using those rectangles. So let's see what it makes for a bar chart. So here you see for a bar chart, it has used the totals, but this is not exactly what I want, right? Like I wanted a column chart. So let's try a column chart and see what it makes. Basically replicating what we made in Excel. Oh wait, it still did not work. Uh, you know, it has all the years, uh, but it's all, all not taking the separate values, right? Let's try a stacked column chart. That's what we were trying to make. Now, when we try stacking, you see there's an issue. It stacks the two categories and then put the years in the stack. This is exact and uh, definitely not what we want, right? So the problem here is how the data is structured. So right now our data, uh, the columns are duets and solo and the rows are years, right? So over here, the columns are shown as two, uh, two, uh, bar, uh, two bars and the years are so shown as the different rows, right? So how might we fix it? We can transpose the data, right? So there's this option over here that uh, tells me to transpose the data. Let's see, let's go to uh, the data and see what it looks like. So now you see the data has been flipped and you have columns for every year and then you have two rows to it and solo. And then when you visualize it, you have a bar chart. You can change the height over here. Let's make it what 500, yeah. And then it has all the interaction as well. So you can hover on this and it can show the numbers. It also has the markers on Duet. So let's click on proceed and see what it does. So you can refine your chart. So for example, in this chart, the highest is above 20. So I want to show what comes after that. So I can set a max of let's say 30 and you know, it changes the scale. I can choose or hide to show access labels. I can choose how to format the numbers. 
I can show grid lines, you know, uh, the ticks for the axis. I can sort columns right here. There's no sorting because it's, you know, in a uh, sequence of years. I can change colors. Let's go with the red issue and it it's automatically takes that. You can choose to show totals. You can show the values and all of that. You can add annotations. So a chart title, description, notes, link to a data source. And the best part, you can add a text annotation. So you can click anywhere and then, you know, something, type something, and then you can, so you can point to some interesting stuff in your data, right? And then one thing in the refine is, uh, there's an option for labels. So here, just because there are two categories, it has directly marked in the chart, but you can use it as a color key as well. So if suppose you have like a lots of categories to show uh, in the chart, ideally, if you have more than five, you should rethink your chart because nobody's gonna remember like, you know, 15 different colors and then, you know, uh, take a color palette and read your chart. So those are like some of the pitfalls we'll talk about, but otherwise, you know, if you want to make a legend for your chart, this is how you might do it uh, separately. And then uh, you can download your chart as a PNG or a PDF and uh, yeah, use it uh, however you want. You can also get, uh, once you publish, I think uh, you can get a link to the chart, the interactive version, which you can embed in your, you know, uh, interactive, uh things if you wanna so yeah that's how you make a simple chart using data wrapper and excel i'm sure you have a lot of questions but we'll take it at the end uh yeah this is the kind of chart we made um uh, i made this yesterday Let's take a look at the different parts, you know, anatomy of a chart, because whenever we say charts, we tend to think just about the, you know, the graphical elements and you know, other the shapes, but that's not always true. So you have a title and description. Why is that important? Because if you are having a chart that is declarative, which is, means it has a particular message to deliver, the title is what's going to draw attention and that is usually the insight that you're supposed to take away so sometimes it can be gen as generic as some this or if you know some event happened or something uh critical you want to show in the data like you know uh kishore kumar sang the highest number of songs uh, between the years 80 and 85 so that could be your, your chart title right then this description you know not everything needs to go in the title so then you talk a little bit more about like, you know, if, for example, I don't know how to read the chart, uh, I should still be able to take away like, okay, what am I supposed to understand from this? And sometimes or rather like most of the times they go hand in hand before you read the chart, uh, you might read that text or maybe you try to read the chart and you find that, oh, okay, hmm, okay, I understand this, but what is the chart trying to tell me? And then you read the description and then, you know, it helps you understand the chart better. So that's why, you know, title and description is a part of the chart and very important about the chart itself. You have, you know, Y axis and X axis very important because you need to be able to read what 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 numbers what those numbers mean uh in the end you have a data source and note so if there are any caveats in your data you should be clear uh you should be clear about what the source of the data is you know when you're trying to hide sources that's when you know there may be something you know you reduce the trust, trust factor uh a bit or maybe a lot um then you have the legend, right? Like I should be able to read what the two colors mean, right? So you can either mark it directly over here or like color, color legend that we saw in the other example. Then you have annotation, right? Annotations are your best friend. Don't overdo them, but also they are very useful to, you know, hook the reader to the key message that, hey, you know, uh, look here first, right? Again, visual hierarchy, uh, something shouting out at me in that, visual space, uh, it must be important, right? Can someone tell me uh, uh, what's wrong with the axis, if at all? 
anything. Like if you read the X and the Y axis, do you understand what they mean? Okay, I'm gonna answer this for you as well. Uh, of course, the numbers on the Y, uh, on the X, they read like num uh, years, so it's pretty, uh, and also in the title, you have like over the years or something, so you can understand that, you know, it's time. But on the Y axis, while it might be inferred that those numbers may represent number of songs, but I do not explicitly say, right? So unit. So unit is an important thing whenever you show like 25 what? 25 apples, oranges, songs, right? So I should ideally write that those are 25 songs. So you may not show it everywhere, but at the very least you would know that, okay, uh, the Y axis, the height of the bar shows songs, right? So yeah, that's how you have a chart. <coughs> Now let's read some charts for this. This is an activity. So I would need people to be unmuted uh, and to, you know, engage or uh, verbally with this. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So this is gonna stir up our famous debate of pie charts, bar charts, 3D charts. So the first thing, let's see, uh, you have a pie chart over here. Which is the third largest element in the pie chart? If you, do, or if you don't want to come on the call and answer, uh, is there a way to do a poll in this uh, on Zoom? I, I'm not sure. I can create one side by side. I'm just taking yeah, it. Yeah can yeah with these options that would be amazing let's let's I, just a second yeah thank you okay we have one answer f yes we have a poll i yeah i've launched awesome awesome thank you Okay, uh, the idea is, you know, if you spend the whole day reading a chart, of course, you'll be able to figure it. Like, I'm sure you people have gone to find <laughs> dividers and protractors to calculate angles. Don't do that. 10 seconds for each question. Let's go. Uh, participants, can you uh, access the poll? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe Which is uh, the largest segment in the pie chart. Uh, right, this one only, right? Or there was some. No, no, no. This one only. Uh... Yeah, they've answered as well. Yeah, they have. Uh, they have answered in the chat, but not on the poll. I don't see. Uh, no. I, yeah. It is there in the poll. Should I end it? Then only they'll be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. End it, end it, end it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, F. Awesome. Correct answer. Uh, again. 10 seconds only. Let me create this. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to hide it. Options are A, F, C, D. Sorry, Dennis. E is not an option. We have one F. Okay, five seconds. Let's see the chart again. Okay, let's close the poll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. F. Okay. F. Nope. Wrong. Which is the third largest segment again? A, F, C, D. 
or maybe just <laughs> type out your answers if that's faster right. yeah let's just go let's just yeah quick 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 uh d okay one d a wow can't get people to agree see <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of my charts. I think <laughs> lies there. But I would still say the highlight of the entire workshop for me would be please don't have cut a person into half to demonstrate fractions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Humble request. Okay, D, F, A. Oh my God. Let's go with D. It's all the same color on a mobile phone. Hard to see. Okay, okay, that's a legit problem. But let's go with D, and that's wrong. Uh, again, which is the third largest segment in the pie chart? A G H D. 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 Oh. A. D. Let's go with D. Oh, correct. Oh, easy. Again. E F B H. It's always the third largest segment. <laughs> F F F E F F F. Okay, let's go with F. Oh, correct. Nice. All right. Now the same question, but with a bar chart. This should be fast. Which is the third largest bar? Options will keep changing, but it's always which is the third largest bar. F. Wow. People haven't agreed like that in ages. Next. A, B, C, D. Which is the third largest bar? D. D A O oh. D okay now in this one which is the third largest E F G H F F okay cool again A B C D D D oh M. EFTH. F, F, uh, woo, full marks. Finally. Full marks. Now, fun stuff. So, A and B, too. What is the difference in size, like ratio? How much taller? is how many how much times is a to b you have to enter a number i just put one uh, count count five six okay i'm gonna go up to five and wait for nine Nine. Wow, you're came prepared with words or something. But let's lock the answer. That was wrong, but still. Okay, how much larger in area is A to B? Bubble charts. Versus bar charts. Five. Five ten. Mm -hmm. uh, for this, um, can we unmute, uh, you know, whoever wants to say how you, the process, how you came uh, to the answer five? Oh, somebody said nine. No, five only. 
That was the previous. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, who should I meet? Who uh, Who wants to answer? <laughs> How did you come to Saravan? Nan. Yeah. yeah. Let me in. Uh, hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I can. Yep. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Here, my perception was uh, five times. It is mm -hmm. simply like uh, a number of. Uh, Based on the radius, I applied uh, five times with okay. the height. So, did you measure the radius by perception? <laughs> Not exactly. By perception, yes. So, how big is the radius? Like, uh, for before we talk, uh, like, how okay. is the radius? Okay, okay. For example, if we, yeah. If we if we keep the uh, B circle into A, it yeah. can be four. It's big uh not exactly match in case if we can keep five circle inside the a so that was yeah. my uh, assumption yeah 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 no 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 uh, so in terms of the radius you said no <clears throat> so how big is is radius compared to b five a's radius is five times b's radius yes yes okay so then how big is a's area compared to b uh for example, if the radius of B is 10 means the radius of A will be 50, 50. 50, okay. So then uh, what is the relation between their area? So, okay, again, sorry for bringing up high school maths, but mm -hmm. what is the relation between area and uh, radius of a circle? No, that's only the perception of the n number of, I mean, the size of the B and A. That's only because I don't have uh, the mathematical calculation. It, it is simply yeah, yeah. just, yeah. For example, we make, uh, export the images into 1x, into 4x, 3x, right? So the same calculation I just applied. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's fine. But uh, let's say... So let's talk about it in the form of data, right? So B yeah. is one data point, A is one data point, right? So right. now looking at the data, it looks like, you know, A is five times the size of B, right? Yeah. Correct. That's what you're saying. Perception, right? Yes. And that's correct. But mathematically, mm -hmm. how big is the data of A compared to B, right? Because when mm -hmm. you are using a circle to show data, understanding yeah. is you are, it's a space, filled space, right? So you would under not read the radius, you would see the area, right? Like you did, right? Like B's space occupied by B is uh, like five of those B can fit in A, right? Yes. So that's the perception. But mathematically, the data would be five square, 25 times. So you see what looks like five times is actually 25 times, right? Because radius is what? Pi R square, right? So mm -hmm. when you are using the space, so it becomes a square relationship. Now a reader, he doesn't, uh, you cannot expect re a reader to, uh, you know, bring his knowledge of uh, geometry and then understand, oh, achha, you know, it looks five times, but it actually is 25 times, huh? So you see what, <laughs> what am I getting at? So mm -hmm. let's let's do five and put our answer. Of course, that's wrong. Okay. Now it gets more interesting. Uh, how much larger in volume, right? So you have a 3D shape here, right? Uh, when you see a 3D shape, what do you compare? space 3d space so how many of those b balls can you fit inside a balls in the space right what do you think uh is still five uh yeah maybe 
Any other answers? But this one is circle is bigger than previous, right? I don't need. Fifteen. No, no, no. Same size. Same size. Same size. Okay. Fifteen. Four. Okay. So yeah, that was not right. So so point being, we understand like how difficult it is, right? So the moment we move from one dimension, which was uh, a bar chart to a circle, which is still one dimension, but it's still, you know, uh, 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 sorry, which, which becomes area. And then you have space, sphere, right? So I'm not saying that you cannot use pie charts. So angles, that was the second dimension, like angular, uh, comparison, linear comparison versus angular comparison. So these are all visual variables, right? Like, so it's some property of a geometric shape, right? So everything has comes with its own level of complexity in how you understand, right? And the, the idea of this exercise is whenever you're making something, we have to understand like how people read. And now we have seen like how you read some of those things, right? And that's where those we bring in the, the room for uh, mistakes and misinterpretation, right? Uh, okay, before we end, uh, the best one. Is it true? Is there a color gradient in that bar? I think it is varying for me from the angle I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> the IPS on your screen isn't <laughs> working. <laughs> you have to claim warranty. Okay. Uh, yes or no? How many yeses do we have? Let's go with no. Correct. There was no. So, you know, colors can also be deceptive because colors, the perception of colors vary depending on what's around, right? Uh, the famous book by Joseph Alberts. Um, so, right? So as designers, we understand how important it is. Nothing is absolute truth is a myth right <laughs> or not so you have to understand uh, all these pitfalls when you are designing uh, yeah so we have read some charts so uh, again in design language form follows function right so form of your visualization should follow how people read and perceive things and the purpose the function of your chart should be what people need to know, right? And at this point, uh, this is a screenshot from our writer's COVID, COVID tracker. Uh, this is just an example of uh, how, depending on uh, what you need to uh, uh, show and tell, uh, you can change the form of your chart a little bit, uh, especially when you're designing for digital interfaces because we need to make everything responsive for you know desktop, mobile, and all those. So that brings in additional challenges of how do you make data visualization responsive. So if you have a bar chart, you rotate it, make it into a flow in the Y direction because you have more space. Like it could be as simple as that to, you know, changing the form of a chart, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. Just, you know, leaving you with these things to think about next time you work on a visualization. Nothing to get scared about as long as we're conscious of every decision that we make, right? Uh, uh, how are we doing on time? Uh, if not, then I'll skip this, but I just want to uh, point you to this. Uh, list. Yeah. I think it's, we have five minutes. Uh, okay. Like we cross the time by five minutes, nine thirty four okay. as of now. Okay, okay. So I I'll I'll uh skip this one, but uh the point is uh some of the stuff that I was talking about earlier, right? So 
on the top right, you have uh, a pie chart uh, that has, that looks like a CD behind an auto rickshaw, right? All possible colors uh, there. So it doesn't really work, but also depends on like what message you are giving. But I think this is not giving me any message other than a headache. Uh, so things that you're so probably pie chart isn't the best chart, even though you're doing a part to whole relationship. Uh, so on and so forth, different uh, somewhere you have a problem of representing the y-axis, like it doesn't start from zero. Uh, somewhere you have unequal categories, the chart with the shoe frequency, you know, white is shown in blue, black is shown in uh, green, you know, uh, causing visual anxiety. Also, the chart, typically as a pra good practice, like if you have a bar chart, you know, it's good to order it, right? Like, so that you don't have to answer that question, which is the third highest bar, not the exercise that we did, right? Like, it should be evident, ordered, right? Like, if two bars are of the same size, you know, you can put them together and they look similar, right? So these are design decisions, right? These are what would differentiate between a chart that comes from uh, you know, a uh, 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 bespoke tool uh, uh, chart made by, you know, somebody who is not so averse, uh, like averse in design versus a designer making a chart, which is both accurate and visually uh, pleasing, meaningful, beautiful, whatever you want to call it, right? So yeah, there's this resource called viz.wtf, uh, bad visualizations on Tumblr. You can take a look at all charts and what's wrong with them. It's a nice exercise for yourself. And so design thinking can be applied to data and well-designed information can inform conversations and make the society smarter. So where you have data that's messy, you can sort them, arrange them, visually present them, explain it with a story and then you have actionable insights right it's uh this graphic is from something called the lego data story but it makes sense right and the design process for data viz isn't that different from like you know something like the double diamond where you have uh you have a uh you it's an iterative process that way so yes that's all. At the end of this, uh, this uh, this link you can follow to a list of resources that I have compiled for books, uh, inspiration, and so on and so forth. Uh, that will help you. Um, you know, uh, reference to reference at different points as you embark on your journey of data visualization. And yes, that's the end of my presentation. So over to you all now. Time for you all to talk. <clears throat> Thank you so much. I think. Uh... I went back to the drawing board, I would say, or to the high school maths in this. But I think that's what essential. What is essential about what we have learned in the past, and that's how how we can map it up with data actually. So uh, that was pretty pretty insightful. Uh, and I think in the Q and A, the question which we had, can we identify a particular kind of data work with which kind of chart? That has already been answered in yeah. the last thirty minutes. So uh, if you have, uh, if you guys on the uh, workshop have any other further questions, we would be happy to take. Uh, I've also shared Prasanta's LinkedIn profile. You can connect with him and learn more from his journey with data. So yeah, thank you for that. Should we take a group photo or something? Is that something you do? No. The videos are off, but oh, okay. we can do it. <laughs> I think there are no questions, but it's already been solved, I believe, in the quiz we just took. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Over to you then. Yeah. Uh, I think we can call it a wrap for today. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for uh, doing this with us and taking out your precious two hours and that too on a Saturday night uh, in India at least. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for that. And I think the biggest takeaway would be please don't cut humans. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please don't. 
ดูเทงอ yeah thank you so much and have a great weekend everyone uh f o l share this uh you'll soon uh, get a certificate after the workshop is over share it on your LinkedIn profile and it would be helpful for others to join and attend such insightful workshops and thank you so much for Santa again have a great great weekend yeah you all too bye bye bye